Hey guys, uh, welcome to this session of the Investor Spotlight with Royal Legal Solutions. Of course, I am Scott Royal Smith. I'm the owner of Royal Legal Solutions. Uh, we're going to be posting uh, this video and conversation today uh, to our Facebook channel, the Tax Legal and uh, Access Protection Tax Legal um, Expert Secrets uh, for Real Estate Investors. That's our Facebook group, our official Facebook group for Royal Legal Solutions. It's the place to be able to have this higher level conversation like we're going to be having today. Uh, so we can really get past the noise of what's going on out there um, in the world and have a tight community of uh, high achievers um, to, to really be able to see like what's the actual information that we go into. And so part of that's going to be getting knowing each other better, which is what uh, my goal is here uh, with Jose. Um, getting to know him better. So Jose, thanks thanks for joining me here today. Um, and I was wondering if you could just tell us a little bit about um, like your background and how you got involved in um, you know real estate and entrepreneurialism and what your journey has been this far. Yeah, absolutely. So um, so I found out uh, about multifamily through my um, nine to five, well, W2, because it's not really nine to five. Uh, so I work for a national restoration company and uh, the majority of our clients are multifamily um, investors and property management companies primarily institutional investors. So as I got to understand a little bit more on their business model, um, it made a lot more sense for me to be involved in real estate to kind of plan for the future and um, set myself up for, um, for wealth building. That's awesome, man. So how's that been going for you so far? How many, how many units do you have right now? So I finally purchased my first one. I got over the analysis paralysis. I will say that it was about a two and a half year analysis paralysis, just working through my fear. And it really helped mastermind um, to really understand that it was my fear of certainty that was keeping me from moving forward with this. Uh, also the birth of our, um, our baby boy last year. So um, he, you know, I needed to make sure that we were set up for, um, for our family. And so I purchased my first seven unit property um, on the 19th of March. So less than a month ago. Uh, that's awesome, man. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah that's awesome. Where do, you, where do you see this growing for you? Because it sounds like you're trying to build that financial security for your family. And, and so, you know, do you have a vision for like where your growth through the real estate investing is going to go? Absolutely. So my goal, initial goal for the year was um, 15 units. I bumped that to 21 units for 2020. Um, I'm actually in conversation right now to hopefully get the exceed that goal by the end of Q2. So if I hit uh, 21 units by the end of Q2, then I will bump that to 42 units. Um, so I'm kind of taking the Brandon Turner stack approach and whatever I get, I'm trying to double that um, and continue to grow my um, Financial independence date is November 2nd, 2022. So I'll be celebrating my 40th birthday with a hella boarding trip. That's awesome, man. Can you tell us, so, so everybody that might not know about, you know, Brandon Turner, the financial stack, how do you actually determine uh, like your financial freedom date? Um, why it's important to have a celebratory event, you know, at that date. Um, can you talk us through a little bit about what your experience is with that and, and why that makes sense to you? Sure. Yeah, the um, the bigger pockets community was um, pretty instrumental in my learning. I, I want to say like ninety percent of everything I learned in multifamily investing or investing in general came from the bigger pockets community. Um, the books that were put together. It was David Green's uh, Long Distance Real Estate Investing and the Bird Book that kind of gave me a little bit of the blueprint on what I was looking for to also get me through that fear. Um, so Brandon Stack was based how he breaks it out is that if you even start in single family residential you buy that first property this year, uh, maybe it's a house hack, then you, you know, you get that rented out and then move on to the next property. So then next year you'll do two, two properties. The year after that, you'll do four properties, then eight properties and continue to stack it from there. So it's kind of like this idea that you just like keep on doing it. You, whatever you did last year to set that goal is doubling it up and you just keep doubling it up. Right. As you go with it. And then uh, what tools did you use to be able to determine your financial freedom date? Um, so I basically just put out all of my fixed and variable expenses, kept track of them for the last um, probably like three or four months. And it, that's basically where I was looking at the uh, cash flow per unit. So in order for me to get to what I, I feel I can transition completely into the um, into real estate investing would be hitting that uh, about 84 units. And then okay. I focus on real estate investing full time. Did you do that as like a custom uh, build for yourself of like what that pro forma would be or did you have somebody that gave you a tool uh, to help you model that out? 
Uh, I was using the bigger pocket calculators as far as analyzing my deals, and then, but as far as the um, cash flow, uh, I just I basically broke it down per unit on what I would need to get there. So initially, I was my goal was three hundred and fifty dollars cash. And then I realized that that wasn't realistic in, in a lot of the uh, properties I was looking at. So I, I, I was conservative with $150 um, dollars per unit um, after you factor in all the expense reserves for capital improvement, vacancy, repairs, and property management. Cool. So it sounds like you created like a little bit of a custom tool for yourself. And it's saying like, what's your own custom dashboard? Yeah, pretty much. That's awesome, it's, man. It's just a longer spreadsheet for me. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot. It has a lot more columns, I bet. Yeah. You know, I guess of that. Cool, man. Um, so, where where do you see like, um, or what steps have you taken inside of like your like asset protection, your tax planning, and your estate planning? So, and that's where when I heard you speak on Monday um, in the mastermind, I was um, my mind was blown a little bit, and I felt completely naked based on what I was doing already. Um, I did purchase that property in an LLC. Um, so it was uh, set up in the state that I uh, purchased that property. And that's about where I'm at right now um, as far as the asset protection side of it. Cool. Well, in terms of the asset protection, tax planning and estate planning, where do you see are like the gaps um, that you have from here? Let me talk on Monday to like where you sit today of saying like, hey, these are the things that I learned from listening to this that makes sense for me in terms of things to look at for the future? Well, I mean, the way you broke it down for your asset holding company, the operating company, um, and not like convoluting all the bank accounts and everything. So I want to just make sure that I can, you know, make those steps now so that I don't have to backtrack and redo everything, <laughs> everything as I continue to acquire more properties. Cool, man. Well, I'm really glad that that was a valuable talk uh, no, for I'm you. Not. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so, so let's share a little bit about um, what kinds of things, you know, because we have investors of all types that are part of this community. Um, what are the, who are the types of people that like you think um, that you can be able to help as part of like contributing to the community, you know, as part of like offering help and part of receiving help for people? You know, who do you see are people that say like, hey, you know, these are people that I could share my experience with, my knowledge with, and I could really help impact their life for the better? Um, honestly, every newbie that has that has that analysis paralysis fear because even even as I was going through um, this closing for the seven unit, um, I pretty much was nervous as hell, even probably like five days afterwards that I made the right decision. Um, but I think I was trying to talk myself out mentally of the um, purchase the entire time. So the fear is definitely real, um, but as, um, as everyone says, getting that first property definitely um, put you on the right path because from that first property um, and the relationships I built through networking and trying to get all the players in place, um, I have a, a good lead for my second property for the end of Q2. So that's awesome, man. Yeah. So if anybody's listening to this and, and you're just getting, you're in the stuck in the analysis paralysis, Jose is a great person to reach out to because he's just overcome it. So he's really close to the event of coming through that problem, which means that he's really going to be able to help identify with you about exactly what you're feeling uh, right now and to be able to help you overcome that hump if you're getting stuck there. And it's really, you know, quite impressive that this is actually when he closed on the property because it's April 9th right now, right? So he's closing that property when the ish is hitting the fan for a lot of people that are out there, right? And he's doing it anyway. Um, so I'm actually curious to know, Jose, is like what what is it that, that helped you um, – Continue on because there's a lot of guys out there like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not doing anything with my real estate until I know how this whole thing could kind of plays out with COVID and the economic cycles and whatnot. And maybe I'm over, I'm, I'm purchasing this asset at too high of a price because things might go down or whatnot. What was your analysis through that that lets you say, hey, you know, I feel confident in moving forward and, and getting to the other side? So the seven unit, um, when I purchased it, it was four out of the seven were rented. So there were three vacancies on that and it's, it broke even at four. So knowing that it broke even at four and everything else is gonna be cake once I get it completely leased out um, really gave me that, that comfort level. But it was mostly ensuring that I had the right team in place because I'm, the, so the market that I chose is Des Moines, Iowa. And that's just from, um, from close, my um, relationships in Des Moines in like Marshalltown, which is like an hour uh, Northeast of Des Moines. But, 
I have a property manager that I met two years ago at the National Apartment Association, kept in contact with her. Thankfully, she, you know, always answered my calls during that analysis paralysis stage because I, I, I thought I was ready, but I wasn't ready at the time. But she kind of gave me the input on the path of progress for the area. You know, um, anytime I sent her a deal to take a look at the numbers, she gave me great feedback on what she could do as far as increasing rents, um, implementing rubs, and it's really just making sure they have the team in place that really helped me um, overcome that fear. And, and we were talking about implementing rubs. I don't know if that's a term that everybody's familiar with. Could you explain that a little bit? I knew you were going to say that. And then as um, <laughs> ratio utility billing system. So I don't, I don't, um, what's funny is that there's a lot of items like you can overread and take in content on every single thing and try and have a plan in place. Um, I just focus on trying to find that first deal. Um, and then once I got it into under contract, then that's when I looked into the LLC. And then that's when I, you know, reached out because I didn't know anything about escrow and, you know, how to like close on it. But, you know, you make sure you have the contingencies in place. You have enough timeline to do your due, due diligence. And um, that's when it, like it all comes together. Yeah, so what I'm hearing from you, Jose, is if I'm hearing you correctly on this, is saying like, hey, the most important thing here is actually just finding the right deal. Can you find the right deal that I can have four units uh, leased out and I still break even into it? And then you just keep pushing forward. And you'll have other people around you that'll help keep filling in gaps as long as you keep asking questions um, and that you'll get all the other pieces done. But as long as you have that really good deal and you got a good team, you're going to get to the other side, whatever it is. Is that true for your experience? That's, that's exactly what it was. Awesome. That's cool, man. Um, who do you need help from to help you get to the next level um, from, the, from the community? You know, like what are the types of people that you would say like, man, I could really use your help to get me from here to here? Um, I'd probably say people who had a little bit more experience with the value add um, and have done successful burrs. Um, so on mine, um, it's some light renovation that's needed for this particular property. Uh, but the goal is to get it fully leased um, just because there was high vacancy. So since it's a commercial asset, it's, it's valued a little bit differently. But um, I'm still kind of going through that lending process right now. So uh, I'm going to have a lot more questions. So anyone who's done commercial um, properties, multifamily, um, happy to speak with anybody. Awesome guys. So if you've done the commercial property and the multifamily, if you've, if you're experienced in the value add and how you can do burrs with that, like getting the value add, getting the reassessment, um, getting the new financing in place to pull that money out um, from it, reach out to Jose uh, and connect with him and share with him uh, your experience about that guys. And um, Jose sounds like the kind of guy that's happy to return the favor any way he can with it, with, uh, with his offers to help other, other people here in the community too. So um, the best way to do that guys is actually going to be dropping a comment um, onto the video that we're posting here in the tax legal and asset protection secrets for real estate investors, Facebook group, which is the real is the uh, Facebook group for row legal solutions uh, members um, and uh, drop the comments in there to be able to ask Jose questions or offer him help or guidance um, on the things that he's asked uh, about here. If you're a new investor, if you know how to do the value add and the burr method with that commercial property. Uh, also, um, Jose, is there any other way that you'd like people to be able to reach out to you, say if they don't have Facebook or, or if they're just listening to the podcast right now? Um, yeah, I would say email me at, uh, it's a new um, brand that I'm trying to kind of develop, uh, but email me to claims to fire at gmail.com. So C-L-A-I-M-S-T-O-F-I-R-E at gmail.com. Awesome, guys. So email Jose at claimsofire.com. Thank you, Jose, so much for becoming part of the community and uh, uh, offering to help other people. And I, I hope that uh, we all help rally behind Jose to help him with his uh, value add and um, become successful with his commercial properties and doing that burr method. So um, I'm glad you guys are all tuned in here today. Thank you, Jose, for, for coming in. Um, drop some comments here in the video, and uh, we'll catch you around soon. Thanks, Scott.